Hello everybody, my name is Willie Boland from Liffey Mills and we're back here on the farm of Robert Dempsey in South Offaly. We're in a field of winter barley. That we last visited this farm last October when winter barley was at three to four leaf stage. It was looking very healthy at the time and this is just a continuation from that previous visit. Um, James Brady was with us here the last day and he outlined what that field of winter barley had got up to that and maybe the plan going forward. So James has kindly been with us again, he's our tillage expert in Liffey's. So James, I'm going to hand it over to you, but first of all I want you to recap on that time of the winter barley, what stage it was at at that time, and what I got up to that, and maybe going forward from then. Right. James. <coughs> Thanks Willie. Well you're seeing winter barley in all its glory here today in South Offaly, but that's about the only glory it's seen the whole year. Uh, it's after a very difficult growing conditions all through the winter and early spring. Uh, at the beginning of the season we set out to for top yields obviously and to achieve the top yields we needed optimum growing conditions right from establishment through the vegetative phase, the reproductive phase and onto grain filling. Now we're getting good, this is good weather for grain filling but this is about the best of the weather winter barley has got the whole year. Uh, we, we established, we, our aim was to establish three, over 300 plants per square metre and for that we had a seeding rate of 350 seeds per square metre. Uh, we looked again in January then to see what, what way the crop had come over the winter and the plant count was anything but good. Well, we didn't hit the benchmark of 300, it was down around 250 to 280. Now, the reason for that was probably twofold. We had a very wet winter and barley, as you know, does not like wet feet. Also added to that was, I think there was, you could see compaction lines right through the field. The, the old adage, if it was good enough to sow, it was good enough to roll, I think was turned on its head this year. When we were doing the plant counts here in January, you could see the compaction lines of the roller. That together with the, all the rain that fell over the winter didn't uh, help our plant counts. So we were on the back foot straight away, we knew in January. So we knew we had to drive tiller production. Uh, that, to do that, we were going to have to get nutrition right and plant growth regulation. But because of the weather, February was even wet. Our first application of nitrogen was about 50 kilos of nitrogen, and that went on, only went on at the end of February. Uh, our second application, the main split, that went on mid-March, about 100 kilos. And that's the first time we got a sprayer in here uh, with trace element and plant growth regulator. We finished off the nitrogen then by about the second week of April with another 50. Now we have what we have. As you can see, we did a plant count around the field. We have an average of about between 750 to 800 plants per square or ears per square meter and that is the major uh, factor in yield is the number of ears per square meter that's not what we were looking for we were hoping that maybe to get about 900 so as I say we have what we have what we could have done different I don't know looking back we probably would have tried to get the nitrogen the first split out earlier but the rain didn't allow that if we did, we might have got uh, grow regulator and trace element out a bit earlier, but going back to what I said, we have what we have. All we can do now is keep the crop as green for as long as possible, since there's about five weeks of a grain filling period between heading out uh, and before the crop starts to, to ripen. So all we can do now is keep it as green for as long as possible. That's interesting, James. And I know from looking around the country, and, and it's, it's interesting that you outlined the, the roller marks. I've seen roller marks in winter barley and, and the outline of the roller and, and it's, it's compaction and I can see it all over the country. Do you think really um, going forward and, and next season is only around the corner again, when we sow fields of winter barley, should we leave the roller in the yard? Well, like I said, the old adage of it was, this was fit enough to sow mm. because when we were here, we had a good plant establishment. It's just the amount of rain 
that fell in a short period of time after the rolling, I think was the problem. Yeah. Uh, again, it is a decision year on year, but I wouldn't be rolling out, uh, ruling out rolling, I'd say. Okay. Maybe the use of a ring roller more so than a flat roller allows maybe more room yeah, for water yeah, to get down. Yeah. Um, another question, you talk about feeding or keeping the plant green and that's all we can do is keep the plant green for as long as possible. How do you maintain we do that, let's say go from well, the start? Well that was the fungicide element of it and one of the, the bright sparks of this year was that disease pressure was low. The first fungicide this got was the last week of March, was Easter week, it got 0.8 of a litre of coyote. Three weeks later, uh, it got 0.6 of eology with turple. And just as the head was coming out, the head was out mostly, it got acorn barley gold of 0.4 of decay and 0.8 of serpent, along with one and a half litres of falpet. And as you can see, the crop is spotless. On hindsight, we possibly could have got away with just two fungicides, but you know, talk is cheap, talk looking is backwards. Cheap hindsight, now, on the yeah. final spray, we put on uh, liquid magnesium, uh, hoping to prolong greening. We have five weeks of a grain fill period, so we want to keep it as green for as long as possible so that all the grains fill properly. And what does liquid magnesium do to the plant then? To, in, in well, uh, the chlorophyll molecule which traps the sunlight there today. The central atom of the chlorophyll molecule is magnesium, so the more magnesium we give it, the theory is it should stay greener for longer. Okay, and as we know, the flag leaf on the plant, the longer that stays greener, the more chance for well, green. Well, the longer it's greener, the more, uh, the longer it is greener, the more energy it's going to trap. Yeah. The fungicide program worked very well, and as you said earlier, the crop is spotlessly clean. Spotless, and yeah. And sure, all we can do then from now till the 20th of July is pray for not excessive rain to lodge it when the grain head gets heavy and lots of sunshine and grotty, showery, sunshiny weather for grain If we get weather like today, plenty of sunshine, plenty yeah. of showers and no drought. And no drought, yeah. yes. We get our, the seed, to get the seed bed uh, right, is that kind of down to the soil fertility or um, well, what, what you way does To that? get the seed bed right is, is, is down to uh, sowing conditions. I wouldn't worry about the fertility. You, you need to establish the crop. You need uh, uh, good soil conditions and get your seeding rate right. Now your seeding rate will vary depending on the conditions. If you're sowing uh, the middle of October, your seeding rate will be a lot higher than if you're sowing the middle of September. All right, so I'm trying to get my seeding rate, not, not the fertility or whatever, to actually conditions of the ground and, and whatever when I'm sowing it. Yeah, you, you, pick the number, you, you pick the number of seeds you're going to sow based on what your guesstimate is, how much you're going to survive. Now, if you're sowing in early September, you can be fairly sure uh, certified seed has a germination capacity of 85% plus. So if you're sowing certified seed in, in uh, mid, mid to late September, you can be fairly certain that 85 to 90% of that seed will germinate to produce a plant. Now, if you're sowing the 20th of October, uh, you will have to be adjusting backwards maybe to 70%. Yeah. Uh, so you have to increase the seeding rate to, uh, to account for that. All right. Your, your I, aim is to produce 300 viable plants per square metre or three or, or more than that if you can. And then uh, like how we, w we want them to tiller. So how, how do I go about getting them to tiller as best I can? Like what, well, that's where your nutrition, that's where your nutrition All comes right. in. Uh, uh, proper nutrition uh, will drive tillering and we can use growth regulation then to uh, persuade it, in yeah. other words. Uh, but each plant, your aim is to produce three to four tillers, so that maybe at growth stage 30, maybe around mid-March, you could have 11 to 1200 shoots per square meter. Now they're not all going to survive. Disease, uh, lack of light, even a small bit of poor nutrition, some of them, the weaker ones will die off. But your aim is that you'll have 900 to 1,000 heads, yeah. viable heads, going and, to harvest. And so when, when should I be going with, like, should I be going with my, say, P and K when I'm sowing it, or should I be going after, say, after after Christmas with it, or when, when should I get in with that? Or Ideally, if you could get your P and K into the seedbed at sowing. If right. not, I would be 
aim to get it out as early in February as you can. Yeah, and would you be going with your with your nitrogen then as early as you can? Or? I I would be of the opinion, uh, especially if you're driving tiller production, I would be getting out your first split of nitrogen from early to mid February. Yeah, uh, forty to fifty kilos to the hectare of nitrogen should be enough. Yeah, yeah, forty maybe. Yeah, around half a bag of fuel. Yeah, about or half like a bag of urea, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, and so sure, look, we, we kind of get to this stage then, like, I suppose is nutrition gone over at this stage or, or uh, where, no, no, what are well, you talking about nutrition at this stage? Or? Well, your, your aim at this stage, you have, you can't do anything about the number of years now, you can't the sun, manufacture them at this stage. The sun's doing it all now. The is sun it? is doing it all now, all right. so all you can do is keep that plant as green as possible for as long as possible. The while, while the crop is green, it's taken in. Yeah. energy from the sun. Is it the flag leaf is it? Yeah or? well the flag leaf is the main leaf but your owns right. are will be will be uh, trapping for um, sunlight as well. Plus your your stem. Alright but all your are. your flag leaf is the main leaf. Alright. And uh, that's why you that's why you're putting your fungicide out. You're yeah. trying to keep that as green keep keep uh, keep as much green leaf area as possible. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in, lads. And the next time you'll hear, we'll be here, is when the combine is in, and that'll tell all the tales. So, on that note, I want to thank Robert and thank James, and thank you all for tuning in, and tune in for the next video on our own social media sites. Thank you very much.